Hi there, this is going to be a quick impressions video of Linux on the Minisform V3. In this case, this is going to be Bazite OS on the Minisform V3 tablet. So the things I want to go over mainly are primarily one, Android, through something called WageOrid, which gives us Android apps on this device. You of course have your regular game mode, your regular Steam games, but then on top of that, we still also have our regular desktop. So I think this tablet has a lot of potential because it could do all three. Anyways, let's get started. So there's two ways to run WageOid on the Minisform V3. One way is here through through game mode, where you could add WageOid as a non-Steam game. I have a controller here. You can use the control it. I could also use the touch screen. Um, but let's just get it started. And now, as you could see, uh, there's our Android running, so you can have your Android apps. But one thing Bazite added as an additional feature is there's swipe gestures to pull up the menus. So I could pull up the left-hand menu or the quick access menu all through touch screen. So I could use this as a, as a touch device. Android here works pretty well, but it's not perfect. So on game mode, if you use Android, you, the pen doesn't do anything. So if I use a pen, it doesn't do anything. But in desktop mode, you can get the pen to work. So one caveat of running Android in game mode. But on the upside, you know, you could have it run side by side with any of your games, and then you just have Android running. And then here, just to show it in action, I'll just run, you know, I'll just pull up a game. Let's try Honkai Star Rail. And here is the game loaded in and in action. Mind you, I wouldn't recommend you play the game through Android because you could just download it on the desktop and play the PC version. But this is just to show that the game can indeed work. And uh, as you can see here, I've also pulled up the performance overlay. And it's running it in at 60 FPS right now. Um, this is on high settings, so high settings, 60 FPS. And you can see the game is working, um, the Android version, which is a little weird to see on a tablet like this, but it does work. One thing to note here is that it's still a work in progress. So for example, I showed you Honkai Star, Star Rail, and that's a game that does work, but not all Android games will work. For example, I pull, tried pulling up Genshin Impact, the Android version, and it wouldn't work here. So your mileage will vary depending on the games you want to play. Um, besides that though, you could also pull up regular apps, like here's a manga app, and if I just pull up, uh, I don't know, let's pull up like the first an early chapter. You can read your comics here. While WageRoid is cool here, um, it's not perfect. Uh, there are some bugs, and it will occasionally crash. I've noticed it sometimes um, has a GPU crash on this device, but that's it in game mode. I'll show you it briefly in desktop mode so you can see the pen in action. So here we are in desktop mode, and here you can see the pen is working in desktop for WageRoid, whereas previously in game mode it wasn't working, right? So if we pull up Google Keep, for example, you can see pen movements. As you saw there, there was a graphical glitch that you just saw, uh, which, like I said, WageRoid on this device is still um, a work in progress. It's going to be buggy and not perfect. So let's just close that out. You can see you can just do regular web, web browsing, etc. And I showed you the pen, and it does, does work, but it's only partially working. For example, if I bring up OneNote, and in OneNote I try and do a pen, it does a really weird thing where the stroke doesn't show up until I actually let go of the pen off, this, off the surface, right? So this is not going to be perfect for all apps. Some apps use the pen very well and others don't. Like OneNote, for example, doesn't handle this pen very well for some weird reason, um, and I'm not sure why. Then I could hold the button and do the erase action, and the erase action works. One other thing I forgot to mention is that there is actually a lot of configuration and extra steps you need to do to get this setup to work. For example, I have to do extra configuration steps to get the pen to work in desktop mode on WageRoid. So besides WageRoid, you could also just use this as a regular laptop. So if I do a three-finger swipe, I could just swipe back and forth between different desktops. If I swipe up, you can see there's different desktops. So if I go to a different desktop, I can still have WageRoid up and running here. Then here I could open up, let's just open a web browser. On this web browser, you know, I could go to you know websites and I could browse and do things, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is a full desktop browser, right? So I have you know plugins, I have full access to desktop, I have full whatever it might be, whatever you want. Um, this is just a regular desktop app at this point. And then you can set up this on-screen keyboard for to be able to navigate to different sites. Um, so you can just you know use it like a regular uh, regular tablet. So I find having Android really useful for comics, music. For example, if I want to read books, I can read books on here. But then also still have regular browsers and full desktop class apps on this device, which is pretty awesome. One thing I forgot to mention for WageRoid is that video playback is buggy on this. So if you were thinking about using Netflix or any other video streaming apps like Hulu or Crunchyroll, 
it's not going to be ideal. You're going to see a lot of crashing. The video playback in WageWord is not great, but that's where it's nice, where you can just go to Netflix on your regular web browser, and you could browse there, right? So there's that. And finally, I just, I'll just i just go over game mode real quickly, because I feel like that's the one part that I didn't go over. And as you can see, it works just like a Steam Deck, where there's a return to gaming mode icon on the desktop. And if we give it a moment, it will go back into game mode. Now, as you can see here, we're now back in game mode. I have a controller, wireless controller hooked up. And let's just pull up, boot up a game. And you can pull up the menus, quick access menu. If you need TDP control, you could install simple like TDP and get basic TDP control and other controls like that. So here I am in game. And let me just turn down the volume really quick, actually. So let's just use the swipe menu, swipe, and then let's just reduce the volume. You can see the game is running at near 60 FPS. And this is at, let's see what TDP we're at. We're at 20 TDP, 20 watt TDP. So if we want to see the TDP in action, let's pull, pull down the TDP and it went down to 22 FPS. If we go back up, it shoots back up to 60 FPS. So we know the TDP control is working. And let me just bring the volume back up just a little bit. And everything's running really smoothly. So one thing I should mention is that here, if you look under performance, it shows that you could disable the frame limit and enable VRR. There's some additional configuration I'll have to do to get uh, this, this slider to show more than 60, but this can go up to 165 hertz, and I've confirmed that it works. It's just a matter of configuring it, and that requires some extra work. But yeah, overall, I would say that this tablet is pretty great so far. It seems to be working really well with both WayDroid and Game Mode. And you still get access to full desktop apps. It feels like a pro tablet almost, in a way. One thing I also should mention is that other hardware like the fingerprint scanner and the webcam and other things are also working. So this is pretty much, I don't want to say it's bug free. There's still definitely bugs that will need to be worked out, but for something that just released less than a week ago, this is pretty awesome. Anyways, that's it for me.